presenters. Uh, at the end, if we have a time, we will be open up the mics, but we don't anticipate uh, we'll be getting back with folks and, and sharing the questions we have with those organizations. So James Massey and uh, Stephen uh, Prado and on my team will be facilitating and moderating and putting up the uh, PowerPoints that we received and any other information. So I'm Renee Watson and I'm the director of the small business office uh, with the county uh, and we're ready to get started. So thanks everybody. Thanks you for letting our presenters for letting us uh, in, um, to share your information with the community and those small business owners. Thank you for taking your time uh, to join us this morning so you can see the information and the opportunities. So James, with that, let's get started. Okay, so first up in the queue, we have Jason Burgos from our Bear County Purchasing. Jason, at, at this time, your mic is unmuted and you can start whenever you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jason Burgos here with the Bear County Purchasing Department. I uh, wanted to go through some steps regarding registering with us, uh, the importance of selecting commodity codes, and uh, we'll go from there. So first thing is how to register is you go to our Bear County uh, Department website. It's listed on the slide. Click on supplier portal registration in the navigation bar and log in from there. And by the way, the preferred, the preferred uh, cr uh, browser to use is Google Chrome. Uh, some of the information needed for registration is a signed copy of your W-9 form. Be prepared to upload that. Uh, select any and all commodity codes that are applicable to your organization. Codes entered de determine which suppliers will be notified of active events via email. Uh, some of the commodity codes that are obviously important during these times is uh, commodity codes for thermometers, uh, gloves, latex gloves, uh, liquid sanitizer, sanitizing and disinfecting supplies for healthcare personnel, as well as janitorial uh, products. So uh, as well as updating your profile with the diversity codes which pertain to the primary ownership of your business. Uh, please move to the next slide, James. So while in the Bear County Supplier Portal, uh, if you wanna see some of the solicitations that we have uh, open, you click on Browse Open Events listed under the Events tab. You'll be transferred to the Open Events screen. You click on the event you wish to view at, after reviewing the event information, when ready to respond, you click respond now to begin the online submittal process. At this time, we are, because of the situation, we are highly encouraging y'all to uh, submit online. We do accept hard, hard copies, but again, the preferred method is online submittal. Make sure and click submit at the very end when you're done completing your submittal. A message will appear saying, congratulations, your response has been submitted. Currently, no hard copies are being taken at this time. Uh, so again, back to my original comment, please uh, use the online submittal process. If you are having trouble with the Bear County Supplier Portal, you can email aaron.andrade at bear.org or call 210-335-2136 and leave a voicemail and he will uh, get back to you as soon as possible. That's it for uh, Bear Purchasing. Please stay safe. And uh, my information will also be shared as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, next, what you guys are seeing on the agenda is we have Sunt Construction. Uh, Chad, give me just a second. I'm going to unmute your mic and I'm going to mute Jason. Jason, you've been muted. Okay, Chad, uh, your mic's been unmuted. Uh, feel free to start whenever you're ready, sir. Okay. Good morning. Uh, I'm Chad Yan. I'm the area manager for Sun Construction. Um, just want to talk about a couple opportunities that we're uh, currently working on. If you want to go to the next slide. First one is the city of San Antonio, Broadway Street. This is a design build job that we're currently um, in design. We're around 70%. Uh, coming up uh, from now through June, we're pricing CPS network, uh, the distribution, some overhead to underground conversions. We're also pricing saws, water, and sewer work, as well as AT&T is replacing their duck bank uh, from Houston up to I-35. Next slide. Later on um, this summer, we'll actually be pricing the roadway work in June 
of, of Broadway. And then there's a small change order for Avenue B that's in the same vicinity that will price in spring of 21. So we're looking for storm drain, uh, traffic signals, electrical, all the landscaping scope, which actually includes quite a bit of lid features, low impact development, bunch of pavers, site furnishing, asphalt paving, striping, trucking, and rebar are the potential um, scopes for us. The next job, the city of San Antonio's currently uh, has ceiling channel phase three out to bid. It's a $15 million job. This is the third phase of um, three projects that they've built. They've built the other two over the last eight years. The bids um, are due April 20th. We have to turn our price in on the 21st. So looking for storm drain, there's saws, water and sewer joint bid. CPS gas has a crossing underneath the channel. Obviously some trucking. There's a lot of soil nail wall installation, rebar, a little bit of landscaping. Uh, there is a lot of fencing scope that goes on top of the walls for protection, asphalt paving and striping. These drawings can be found on the city's website at civcastusa.com um, for all the information. Next. Uh, third one, City of San Antonio, Cameron Street. This is adjacent to San Pedro Creek that San Davila has previously built. This is from Travis Street up to Kingsbury and over to Flores. Their project budget's four and a half million. We'll be bidding that in summer, this summer. Uh, it's minor flat work, so demo and curb sidewalks, making the, the east side of Cameron Street look like San Pedro Creek. So decorative concrete, MSC blocks, landscape irrigation, the side electrical will include street lights as well as pedestrian lights, some signal work involved, a mill and overlay of Cameron Street, and then you got the pavement markings and some minor storm drain adjustments on that. Next. The next one is SAWS W6 that you may hear about a little bit later. Um, we are teamed with Trailer, so a Trailer Sunt Joint Venture. This is a um, large tunnel bypass around Lackland Air Force Base. If you wanna go to the next slide. So if you look onto the right, um, US 90 is on the top there, and then the tunnel goes around on military to the south side of Lackland. It's basically bypass or putting in a new line to take a 54 inch line out of um, service underneath Lackland. The proposal due dates May 1st. Um, that's when we have to submit our pricing. The contract will go from 2020 to 2023. It's a, uh, SAWS is putting it out as part of their consent decree. So you end up with a large sewer tunnel, um, sewer put in via TBM tunnel. Um, go to the next slide. Looking for opportunities in temporary and permanent um, power. There's some micro tunneling, slip lining of lots of geotechnical instrumentation, erosion control. A lot of that's just at the shaft locations. So don't be scared from the tunnel aspect of it. A lot of it's up, um, on top side, lots of dewatering, uh, slide gates, lots of fencing, temporary and permanent. Uh, there is some minor curb and gutter sidewalks, um, rebar. There's a fairly decent um, scope on open cut sewer and bypassing um, to tie in all the um, current laterals into the new system. Soil nails, uh, we are looking for dump sites to take material, traffic control, drilled shafts, um, bypass pumping for all the open cut um, work, lots of trucking involved, concrete pumping, and then some restoration work um, at the end of the job. Next slide. So currently we're looking for quotes from subcontractors on April 22nd. Again, we have to turn ours in on May 1st. Um, notice to proceed of the work will be on July 13th. Um, there's a contact information, SAWS, w6 at trailer.com uh, if you email them they'll get you into a system called building connect that we're using to um, solicit all of our bids next 
I think this is the last one, um, San Pedro Creek, um, ongoing project for us. Uh, we do have what we're calling work package 22, which is the finishes um, coming out this summer. So that'll be all the flat work, the same decorative concrete continuing through, trucking, landscape irrigation, um, a larger scope for landscaping and irrigation because it's more of a natural um, channel for us side electrical, wayfinding signs, there will be a little bit of tile work, um, quite a bit of masonry, bridge rails, asphalt, um, exterior stucco. There's a, a bathroom facility and two gatehouses that need to get built, which is a good opportunity, um, sandblasting, handrail, and pavement markings. So that's at um, this summer, we'll be bidding that work. I think that's all for me. Um, if you have any questions, um, if you want to go the contact us at texasbid at sunt.com that goes to our pre-construction group and can get you whatever information you need. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Chad. Um, so again, uh, if you guys are, are keeping an eye on the chat screen, if you post your questions in there, even if we don't get to address them or if Chad can't address them now, we will be recording a transcript of what's typed in there. Anything posted in there, we will be following up to address. Uh, so again, uh, we're gonna try and answer as many questions as we can now in the chat. Uh, as you can imagine, it's a little chaotic trying to run this thing with the three of us, but if you just post your questions, if they are not addressed during this uh, call that we have, we will be following up with everyone to address any questions that you pose in there. We'll get them to the right folks. So now with that said, uh, we have Eddie Cruz from VIA, I'm so, from VIA, I apologize. He's been uh, VIA for a while with UHS now. Um, v Eddie, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute your mic now. Eddie, you're on, Thank sorry you. about saying you're still with VIA. Eddie Cruz with UHS. Thank you very much, James, no problem. Uh, I'm Eddie Cruz, Jr. with University Health System. As you know, we're in the front lines with the current situation and expected surge with COVID-19. Um, we still have our common procurements that are moving forward, Women's and Children's Tower. Um, the first slide is just my direct contact number and email. I'll make it short and sweet. Um, if we can just go, because this will be available to everybody who's online, and I wanna thank everybody, Renee and James and her, and her staff for providing this. The second slide is very important. Um, currently at this time, we are looking for PPE to back up for our surge. Um, N95's 3M, N95's Hazard 1870. This is just a nominal list. Um, for our vendor registration, there is the link so you can go to that. But I request as far as PPE to call me directly and email me. We have two um, contract administrators are taking all that information for COVID-19 in preparation uh, for what we expect to be a surge here in the city of San Antonio, Texas, either uh, two weeks or first part of May. And this is important. We are in partnership with SAMC. Um, I'm in currently in the office. I will remain in the office until further instructions. I'm not working remotely. So that way we can ensure that we are able to prepare and provide inventory for all those um, that will be coming to our hospital facilities for care. Um, that's only for university health system. I cannot speak on behalf of the other um, hospitals that are also taking care of COVID-19 patients. Um, but Again, if you have any questions, I ask if you can reach out to me directly. I will direct you to the appropriate contract administrators who are handling that. Um, if you have any inventory on hand, one of the things I'm asking is anybody that's online that has um, ventilators on hand, is if you can send me their specs. Um, we are looking to increase our current inventory. Mr. Hernandez has some serious concerns. We wanna make sure that we have many of those assets on hand to prepare those for incoming patients. Again, this will complete what I have as information to uh, discuss. But again, we still have our normal procurement processes and solicitations. You can go to our link, which is provided on the second slide. Um, if you have any questions on any other things, please call me directly. My name is Eddie Cruz Jr. with UHS. I would like to thank Renee Watson and James and the staff there. Thank you. Okay, Eddie, um, you've been muted. 
really want to thank you so much for joining us, Eddie. Uh, we understand that with everything going on right now and the whole reason that we're having to put this webinar on in the first place, we can imagine you're getting pulled in all sorts of different directions. So a lot of folks, uh, you got to be the most popular guy in the room. So we appreciate you taking time to join us today, Eddie. Uh, now, the next presenter, we've got the International Airport. Uh, I am finding Barbara. Barbara, you are now unmuted. And is Joe going to be speaking as well? Um. No, it's just going to be me. Okay, uh, Barbara, your mic is hot. Everybody can hear you, and uh, feel free to start whenever you're ready. Good morning, everybody, and thank you again, James and Renee, for inviting us for this. So um, we're the San Antonio Airport System, with, Airport System, which consists of the San Antonio International Airport and Stinson Municipal Airport. So we have to follow the guidelines of the FAA. So we have a DBE program that's a Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program and an airport concession disadvantaged business enterprise program as well. So, and then we follow the um, city ordinance, city of San Antonio ordinance for the SMWBEs. So everyone who wants to do business with us, we are registered um, and you need to register with the city as a vendor. So you can go to um, www. Hello? .sanantonio.gov slash purchasing slash SAEPS. And there's a phone number that you can call if you have technical assistance. Um, if you're having trouble with the vendor registry, it's 210-207-0118. And then I listed our um, website for our opportunities at sanantonio.gov slash aviation slash overview of business opportunities. Next page, please. Oh, here's a list of our upcoming um, solicitations. Um, again, being at the airport and with the COVID-19, it's drastically reduced our um, number of our passengers. And so a lot of projects have been put on hold, but this is what we have as of now. If you have any more questions, you can email um, our office at aviation.sbo at sanantonio.gov. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Barbara. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to mute Barbara. Again, thank you so much to San Antonio Airport for joining us. Um, I know that Diane was on. I'm not sure if Suchi joined the call. Uh, Diane, I just unmuted your mic. Are you going to be the only one speaking or is Suchi on as well? Uh, I think it should be Chuchi should be on as well. Um, so if we can skip us uh, at this moment. And then come back. Okay, uh, give me just a second here. Uh, Steven, so San Antonio is asking that we come back to them. If you could move on to, who do we have up? Saws. I'm going to find Mighty Soul's mic. Uh, Mighty Soul, your mic is live, and Stephen. Okay, you can, you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see you. Okay, <laughs> okay perfect. Hello, everybody. Saz is happy to be a part of this, so thank you to Bear County for having this outreach uh, through Zoom. Um, next slide, please. Uh oh, I can't see my screen. Uh, Monty, Monty, I apologize. We had an issue where we could not unlock your uh, presentation. It was locked by password. Um, oh, okay. Are you able to just display it? Steven, uh, do you have that saved in the share drive? Uh, sit tight, everybody. Just a second. Yeah, James, I have it right here. Just Let me just grab it. Admittedly, I'm kind of impressed. It took us 25 minutes to hit our first snag. We've been worried about how this was going to play out.
Okay, well, just to kind of fill up the, the air um, while Stephen is pulling up the presentation, um, SAWS is working with our customers at this time. You may or may not have seen in the news that we are not shutting off anybody's water at this time. We realize that it's a health and safety concern. People need to wash their hands during this time and to keep clean. So if you have any questions as a small business owner, um, please call 210-704-SAWS. And that is our customer service line and our people are there ready to assist you however they can. We do have an affordability program, so um, we know that our in, uh, service industry was really hit hard um, in the past month. So if, you, if you're having some issues with paying your bills, please reach out. Also, the public is welcome to donate to Uplift. Um, which helps people uh, help with their bills, their water bills during these tough times. So I see my presentation is up. Um, thank you very much. And let's go. We have business as usual. Um, we see all of our contract solicitations here on the top part of this page. Um, those are our professional services and our heavy civil construction projects. So um, as you can see, we have several closing within the next a few weeks, including a couple this week. Um, one that was mentioned by Sunt earlier is our W6 upper segment project that goes around Lackland Air Force Base. It is um, uh, due May 1st, and we have several other um, construction projects. We do have our 2020 water production storage facilities tank project uh, that is due this week. That's uh, for engineering services. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out and I'll refer you over to the contract administrator who handles these particular bids and proposals. Um, if you actually go into our website, that's right next to the contract solicitations um, uh, link, you'll be able to see everybody who has downloaded um, those bids and proposals. At the bottom part of this page, if we can scroll down just a little bit, is our procurement bids and that is everything from our purchasing department that is those are our goods and general services and so if you have any questions about those please reach out again if you go to this link right next to the procurement bids heading um, you'll be able to click into each one of these um, bids on our website and see who's in charge of it or what have you but if you have any questions um, please reach out uh, we do have uh, SMWB goals on each of these projects. And so if you have any questions about our SMWB program, generally a firm must be certified by the South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency or Texas Hub. Um, and for heavy civil and professional services, a firm must have a local presence, mean, meaning Bear County or one of the 11 surrounding counties. For our procurement bids, we do not have a local requirement but a firm does need to um, be certified by the SCTRCA, the certification agency, or the state of Texas. For all of our bids to be able to count uh, towards any goals, a firm must be small. So even if you're a minority or woman-owned firm, you must also be a small business enterprise and have that certification. If you're a hub, you're a small business by default. We can scroll down just a little bit more. These are step-by-step -step directions on how to register as a vendor with SAWS. It's very easy by registering as a vendor. You will be able to download bid information, receive bid notifications through your email, and you can also subscribe to any bids or proposals that you want to follow. Here's my direct contact information, including my telephone number and my email address, as well as that of my colleague, Susan Rodriguez, in our SMWBB program. And then we also have a list of COVID-19 resources for businesses. Our local chamber, uh, chambers of commerce have done an outstanding job with putting links up for small business loans, disaster relief, um, paycheck protection loans. So if you go through these links, there's a wealth of information and resources if your business has been affected um, by these COVID-19 times. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much.
Thank you very much for joining us, Body Soul. Uh, sorry about that hiccup that we ran into with your presentation there. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and go back to Stevens. Uh, good morning. Am I on? Oh. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Torrance White. I'm the Swimby Contracting Coordinator for Alamo College's District. And um, we are always accepting uh, vendors with Alamo Colleges. Um, to register as a vendor with Alamo Colleges, you can go to our website, um, alamo.diversitycompliance.com, and I will put that in the chat room. We encourage um, Swimbies as well as anyone that is not, that is not certified as Swimby to register uh, as a vendor with Elmo Colleges. Uh, currently, an opportunity that we have right now is um, we are seeking uh, proposals for marketing and advertising services. I believe the deadline to put in your proposal is April 28th. You could also find out more information about that on our website, alamo.edu, and look up our Purchasing and Contract Administration Department, and that is where you will be able to find um, information about that uh, current opportunity. And um, we also, um, Alamo Colleges is also part of a, uh, also received a bond in 2017, a $450 million bond, part of a, a capital improvements projects. And so this is involving uh, the renovation of current facilities on all our campuses, as well as expansions and um, uh, constructing new facilities as well. Um, so if you'd like to find out more about that, you can just email me at twhite85 at alamo.edu. Again, my email address is twhite85 at alamo.edu. My phone number is 210-485-0127. And again, I'll put my contact information into the chat room. And again, I wanna thank uh, Bear County. I wanna thank Renee, James, and uh, Stephen for inviting me to this meeting. Okay, uh, thank you for joining us, Torrance. Um, if this were a regular Meet the Buyer, I'd probably uh, take a shot at Torrance for leaving us over here at Bear County, but scrambling a little too much for me to be funny right now. Uh, I saw that Tiffany just joined us from Skanska, and I know Jennifer has been on the call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Tiffany. Actually, Tiffany's not showing that she has mic capabilities yet. Uh, Jennifer with Skanska, your mic is live. Are you here? Jennifer, are you on? Okay, we're running into some technical difficulties with Jennifer and Tiffany. We're gonna come right back to them. The next presenters that we have on here are Karen Beyer from uh, GSA and I know Karen is your mic on it is can you hear me I can hear you yes ma'am okay great so I have a couple of slides but um, ours is 
there's so much information that's out there that we're going to, I gave you some websites. So first off, I'm Karen Byer. I'm the customer service director for general services administration here in San Antonio area. And for those of you that don't know, GSA is a federal agency that provides centralized procurement for the federal government. And we also provide facilities for our federal agencies use. It could be the federal courthouses, federal buildings, uh, leased space that any agency may need. So with that, there's a lot of opportunities that come both on the federal uh, procurement side as well as our public building side because we have the public building service. So Renee asked all of us to provide information today on potential procurement forecasts available to the various interests industries as well as you know our small businesses so I thought I would share some of the websites that I think are really important that could help you do the research I mean we're living in a world of big data so it's a lot of upfront research that you have to do on this one of them is our gsa.gov OSBU or Office of Small Business Utilization on that website, you can find a wealth of information that you can search for. Uh, you can explore business models there. It has information as to what the different types of small businesses are that are out there. What are the different types of business models? Learn how to do uh, research with the government market. And those are just some of the links that are on that particular page, as well as you probably have heard of GSA schedules. Well, those are indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contracts. And it, being the federal government, we talk a whole lot of acronyms and it can be so overwhelming. So it's great to be able to go out there and find this information, deal with subcontracting, what are set-asides. Um, how do you work with the GSA schedule contracts or any of those? How do you compete for the non-business, non-scheduled business contracts? So those are just information that's out there and available at that OSBU website. From there, you can access the uh, buying and selling forecast tool, which is a link that is on that particular website. It takes you to um, the forecast of contracting opportunities which I think is, is really a great access. And then from there, the next slide, James, if you would. That takes you to where these forecasts of opportunities are. So from this one, which is that particular website up there, you can search based on um, the area. I searched it for Texas. I searched it for uh, the particular fiscal year and you can do it where you can set it aside for a small business or anything that is even further delineated than that. It tells you all of these opportunities that are out there and available that GSA has. Some of them are for the Department of Interior um, and that is great information. Some may show that it's awarded, some may show that it's in the planning process and then you can actually go further down as you see it says view details and it will tell you what they're looking for. It will also tell you the point of contacts that are out there. So this is just something that I think is, is available and out there, but you guys really just need to kind of, you, you've got to dig to find it, if you will, you know, but it, there's opportunities out there. There's also resources that we have open for coronavirus um, that you can actually hit through acquisition.gov, and it's got all of the uh, OMB guidance and memorandums, it's got a wealth of information. And we at GSA are always sourcing for those things because we have vendors come or um, government agencies come and, and you know the hot commodity topic right now is hand sanitizer and um, personal protection equipment. So if you guys have access to that, or offer that, let us know, and then we can go from there. But my contact information is on this last slide. Uh, James put it out there for me. My email address is in the chat room. So it's Karen, K-A-R-E-N dot buyer at GSA dot gov. If you guys have any questions or you're looking for just a, a walkthrough on how to get here, you can contact me and I can also put you in contact with our Office of Small Business Utilization. But um, if you have questions, write them in the chat and we can get to them at the end. But that's really all I have. And thank you guys for allowing me to participate today. Uh, thank you so much, Karen, uh, and thank you for working with us in that technical difficulty. Again, any questions that you have for Karen with GSA or any presenter that's going to be speaking who has spoken or will be speaking, 
feel free to type them out in the chat. We're, uh, we might have a Q&A session. Our intention is to not to have a Q&A session because all these hot mics is gonna be an issue. But anything that you ask in the chat, we will have a transcript of, and we're gonna put it in the right hands to get your questions answered by the actual buyers. So again, please don't shy away from the chat. Put any questions that you have in the chat. If the presenter does not directly address them, we will be printing them out, providing to the buyers, and they will answer your questions. Uh, we ran into some technical difficulties with Scanska, but I have been informed by several people that Matt McCaffrey is actually going to be speaking for Scanska. Um, Matt, I've unmuted your line. Are you on? I am. Thank you. Okay, Stephen, if you could go back. Is that the beginning of Scanska's presentation? Okay. It is, yeah. Floor is yours, Matt. So yeah, thank you for, for having us. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about a project that's coming up uh, downtown called City Tower. Um, you can go to the next next slide. I'm going to run through these pretty quick. Um, first of all, it's a joint venture between Skanska and FA Nunnally. So uh, we have a small business partner with FA Nunnally. Um, so any so those of you that have worked with either of us or have worked with neither of us, um, you know, please please uh, feel free to look into the job. Um, so just as far as the scope goes, you can go to the next slide. Um, it is a design build job. It's essentially a renovation of the old Frost Tower downtown on Houston Street. Um, it was vacated more or less by by, by Frost and other tenants. Um, so we're doing basically a full renovation uh, from the, the concourse level to the to the penthouse. Um, now I'll get into some of the dates, but essentially the city is going to be um, consolidating a lot of their departments um, in 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 most of the building, and there'll be some tenant space as well. So uh, we're still in the design phase, but we're getting ready to put the, the, the GMP package out in the street. So I'll get into the dates here in a second. Can you go to the next slide. So um, bid packages. So these are the items that we're, we're looking to bid and buy out over the next um, 30 to 45 days. So this, uh, I'll get the dates, but these are the items that we're looking at. So if, if you have any interest or, uh, Experience with these trades, um, be on the lookout for it, uh, or, or or get in contact with us to uh, to get on the bid list. Um, there will be obviously a lot of outreach as well in terms of advertising and that sort of thing. So, but these are the, the packages. If you go to the next slide, uh, just uh, work that already is procured and is in progress. Uh, demolition and abatement is already started in the in, in the building, and then we have furniture and our MEP uh, trades already already signed up. So. Um, that said, if you if you can provide um, services to one of those type of trades at a sub sub tier level, uh, again, feel free to contact us and we connect you with the the uh, the prime prime subcontractors. Um, as far as time goes, I will be issuing the documents within the next two weeks, um, and it'll go out via building connected. I'll talk a little bit about that. Week of May. Um, we'll have our sub selection process and, and, and essentially start construction almost immediately, depending on the trade, uh, June, July of, of this year. Uh, and we'll be completing uh, phase four by four turnover um, in July of 2021. So, uh, as far as how to get, uh, you can go to the next, next step. Uh, you, the the project uh you know is being a city job does have, have, have small business and minority business goals you can see here and keep going and there's a couple things that i'm not sure what's going on with the font here but there's a couple things that can can help um one for us to count you and, and two uh to you know to to make sure that you're registered is one register with the city of San Antonio. Um, there's been already discussion about having to be registered and be within within Bear County or surrounding counties to count. So please do that, even if you are already SCTRCA certified. Um, so there's a link here. I'm sure it'll, it'll get brought up again. Right, you can move on. Um, keep going. So getting on the bid list. Um, one of the, the there's really two things. One uh, is please go through our pre-qualification process. So um, Jenny McGillivray is on, on the line. I'm sure she'll post her information. Uh, she can help with that pre-qualification process. Just gets you in our system um, for a certain dollar value and, and gets you on, on a list that we're gonna send out um, to, as far as outreach for the job. Next slide. And so Jenny's information is on the bottom of, of this slide. And then again, she'll post it in the, in the chat if she hasn't already. 
um, please do this. It will help immensely in terms of getting you, the smoothing process out and getting, getting signed up. I think one more. Uh, and then lastly, uh, similar to other, other companies, we'll be sending out our uh, documents and, and bid, bid packages via Building Connected. So um, if you need to get connected with us, please feel free to contact any of us and we'll get you, get you signed up. So if you have any questions, uh, Tiffany is, uh, post her information in the chat and I will as well. And feel free to contact any of us about, uh, about our city tower job or any of our other projects around town. Okay, thank you so much, Matt. Again, I apologize for the difficulty in finding you there. Uh, Jennifer, Tiffany, I know you guys are on here. Sorry that took a minute. Uh, the next presenter is gonna be Terry Bayshore. I have a hard time keeping up with all the federal acronyms, but I know that uh, what he listed was he's with the 773rd Enterprise uh, Squadron, I believe it was. Terry, uh, your mic is unmuted. Are you with us, Terry? Yeah, I am. Okay, uh, Terry, the floor is yours, sir. All right, sir, thank you very much. Um, my name is Terry Bayshore. I work for the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. And um, one of the units I support as a small business specialist is the 773rd Enterprise Sourcing Squadron. We have other organizations that we support as well, but as you can imagine, right now, there's a lot of focus with uh, the 773rd. Um, you can go to the next slide. So just so everybody knows, our, our normal acquisitions are still going on. Uh, granted, they may be from the, from, uh, the couch of our houses, uh, but we are still pressing on with uh, all of our normal acquisitions. Um, as you can imagine, we have a lot of heavy market research going on. Uh, currently, we are looking to award very quickly a, an award uh, contract to uh, order cloth masks. Now, uh, it's important that I, that I stress that as, as the Air Force is looking, reaching out to, to do this, uh, we are not stockpiling these things. These things are going to be uh, the minimal required, and uh, we will not be looking for N95 masks so that we can continue to provide those to the medical community. So these are just for cloth masks, uh, and that's gonna be a very rapid moving requirement um, the, another thing that we're going to be looking for is our COVID test kits. Uh, as you can imagine, these things are, are, are they're, they're starting to become hard to find. And uh, now what's important to know about the, the test kits is that they must be certified by the FDA. And on their website, uh, they have a list of the certified uh, emergency use authorization for COVID response. So if it's not on there, uh, we can't purchase it at this point, but we are very interested if there are firms out there that are going through the FDA process, certification process, to become emergency use authorized systems. We are very interested in, in uh, getting that information. So my contact information is going to be provided at the, uh, uh, on the next, one of the next slides. So I, I just ask that... Uh, for this and any of the uh, COVID possible COVID solutions that you reach out to me. So um, one thing I wanna make sure that I point out to everybody is that as with all the other federal government agencies, uh, we are posting requirements on beta.sam, but we have an agency or an, uh, an office called AFWorks. And AFWorks is, is an innovative technology, innovative solutions office. And they are posting things on, uh, out there on the website for coronavirus solutions. Uh, if you, and I, I can't, when I went to this uh, link that I provided, it's giving me a, a, an error message. But if, I, if you go to www.appworks.af.mil, um, then you'll see in the top corner coronavirus. Um, there are, they are putting things out there that uh, for, for solutions that we are currently searching for. And there's also another link in that same website that you can provide other solutions. Next slide, please. So 
it's a really important, I know that everybody wants to be involved and everybody wants to be, uh, to provide solutions. It's real important that when you're doing business with us, that you have to be registered already to do business with the government. That's just something we can't get around at this point. So if you have a solution, please send me an email with your cage code, your DUNS, all your certifications through the SBA. Uh, let me know what you, what you have. I, and I have to be honest, I, while I am a small business specialist, I want to know about everything that's available to us. Now, when it comes to these, to these kits and to these face masks, it's important to know that um, if, if you cannot provide around 10,000 or more, then we're not going to be able to probably reach out to you because we just need large numbers as, as we go out for these contracts. And again, we need businesses that are registered to do business with the government now. Um, and please understand, I'm getting a lot of emails uh, from staffing agencies and other agencies that want to be involved and they want to help uh, come up with solutions. Uh, right now, we're not looking at any, for our organization, we're not looking at any staffing requirements at this point. Uh, but, uh, and, and if you go to the next slide, just remember that I may not be able to respond to all of the emails I receive, but uh, I will pass them along to, uh, to, we have multiple teams that are responding to this and multiple teams that are doing market research, and I will pass that information along to those people, to those teams. And uh, I believe that's about it for me. Uh, and uh, as with everybody else, I'll be available for any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, again, if you guys have been on the call for a while, you've heard me say this a couple times, we're keeping mics muted to try and control the traffic. If you have any questions, post them in the chat. Terry and every presenter that we have who's speaking on uh, what buying opportunities they have for their organization will be provided the entire transcript of what you type in there. So if we don't answer that question in the chat, if we don't answer it by the end of the day, we will be giving that transcript to all of the buyers to address any questions that you have. Um, the next presenter, uh, Jerry, I did see your private message. Give me just a second, I'm gonna send that to you. Uh, the next presenter that we have is gonna be Jesse Garcia with Public Works, uh, Bear County Public Works that is. And real quick, uh, Jesse, your mic is unmuted. You will be live in just a second here. Um, I emailed Jesse to make sure he was on the call because depending on how you sign in, if you used an acronym, if you abbreviated your name, I might have a hard time finding you to recognize you. So um, as we're going through this, if you have not presented yet or you are on hold to present, go ahead and check your email. Make sure I haven't said I'm having a hard time finding you because we don't want to hit any snags or delays when we're trying to recognize you. So that being said, uh, Jesse was one of those folks. I've identified him. He's on the call now. Jesse, you're unmuted. Are you here? Yes, I'm present. I'm here. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate it. Thanks for working with us here. Uh, Jesse, the floor is yours. Thank you, James. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Renee, for having uh, Public Works uh, participating in this event. Um, um, looking at the, on the screen, could you zoom out by chance? I can't see the list of the projects. There you go. That's, that's perfect. Um, I only have pretty much two slides I want to discuss. I know there's a lot of presenters here, a lot of information. So I kind of just want to jump into the, the meat of uh, Bear County Public Works and our uh, upcoming uh, our upcoming projects that are going to bid. Uh, we have a number of projects going up to bid this this year, uh, by end of the this fiscal this end of this year. Uh, we have a, a total of about ten projects. Uh, they're separated into different categories. We know we have a transportation uh, uh, section, a flood control, and we're also we also manage the Alamo RMA. Uh, for transportation, we have a total of uh, six projects going to be coming out this uh, year, end of the year, uh, totaling about $58 million. Uh, within those six projects, four of them are NPO projects with federal funds associated with those projects, which is a good thing because uh, with these federal projects, um, there's usually a DB goal as associated with it. Uh, so depending on the size of the project, um, it could be 7%, 6%, 4%. Uh, at the required DBE goal. Uh, for our flood control projects, I'll go back to transportation again, they're, they're all 
horizontal uh, roadway projects, uh, continuing sidewalk, asphalt, curb, uh, you know, box culverts, uh, um, vegetation, etc. Uh, as far as our flood control projects, we do have uh, two that will be going out this year, uh, totaling about 8.4 8 million project, 8.4 8 million. Uh, these are ones a bridge. Actually, they're both bridge projects. A lot of concrete, rebar, uh, a lot of riprap concrete, uh, embankment, and such. Uh, and then we go to our, our Alamo RMA projects. We do have two. These are more residential projects, uh, more like collector type. They do involve uh, curb, sidewalk, pavement as well. Uh, those Alamo RMA projects are, again, two of them. It's only about 7.1 million. So again, an overview just for the, this next year. Uh, we have about 10 projects totaling, totaling about $74 million. Um, now to access uh, these projects, I like to jump into CIFCAS. CIFCAS is a, is a useful tool that Public Works uses, Bear County Public Works. But now, not only public, uh, Bear County Public Works, but so does uh, other entities across Texas. You could find uh, other, other counties, other cities, I, I believe, I know the uh, city of San Antonio utilizes CIFCAST. We up, always upload our 30, 60, 90% plans onto CIFCAST. You could easily track a project. So if we ever upload any information about that project, it will send you a direct email uh, stating that the project has been updated. Uh, you could also, the, most inform the best information on there is that you could see who's been downloading the plans. You can see what prime, prime contractor has been downloading the plans, and it'll give you that contact information so you could, talk, so you could contact that prime. Uh, again, it's, it's real easy to use, it's free. Uh, we pay about $100 per project, but it's free to the users. Uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, hands-on, easy to use, has a, a reliable search engine. Um, and again, the, the, web, the website is www.sifcastusa.com. It is a Texas-based, uh, Plan holders website um, that covers all of Texas, and uh, it's pretty much my then in my presentation. Um, again, there's some there are some links here to our directly to our capital projects, our flood control projects, and our Alamo, and our Alamo RMA projects, and also I have the contact information for my supervisor, uh, David Wegman, who is our engineering services manager, who, who uh, covers the transportation and flood control sections. I also have Reggie Fountain, who is our Alamo RMA operations engineer. So you could call him regarding any other any, any of the RMA projects. And I'll be here if you have any questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jesse. Your mic has been muted. Um, really appreciate you coming out. Public Works is a very strong partner of ours. Uh, I can't think of a meeting that uh, we've tried to do outreach like this and meet the buyer type where Public Works has said, no, they can't come. Um, really appreciate you being on, Jesse. What we're going to do now is we're going to find uh, Jose Castro with TxDOT. Uh, Jose, I believe this is you. Uh, your mic is hot. Are you on? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Um, Jose, your presentation was one of those that we could not unlock. Uh, there's okay. nothing to do to get around that. Uh, so okay. what we, do is we have your logo up, but if you could just verbally... Okay through sure sure and uh good morning everybody uh my name uh my contact information is on the chat uh list uh so please feel free to call me or email me um and i hope everybody's safe this morning uh continue to do so uh, with this covid environment that we're working in um I, what i had sent uh as a powerpoint was uh what we called uh, a checklist of things that we require once a contract project is underway. So this is post, you know, uh, trying to get contracts, trying to bid contracts, uh, trying to contact your, your prime contractor to get a, a subcontract. Uh, so I finished this, uh, this document, just so you're aware that uh, on TxDOT, uh, federal highway projects, and uh, these are projects that TxDOT administers. We also provide funding uh, to local governments who uh, actually manage uh, this FHWA projects, that there are uh, DB requirements. Most, uh, I would say, 99% of the of the FHWA 
funded projects have DBE goals. So this document uh, outlines uh, requirements uh, when it comes to federal highway uh, DBE requirements. So uh, be aware of that uh, sometimes we get contractors that uh, are kind of new to the process, especially small subcontractors, small prime contractors, or even uh, new subcontractors, they may not be aware of all the requirements. So uh, important that you know those requirements. So you know what, uh, when you get a contract that you do have to uh, comply with those requirements. Uh, with that said, uh, uh, for those of you in the audience uh, that are not construction firms, uh, uh, you can also contact me uh, and I'll refer you to purchasing. So if, uh, if you have a service that TechStock can provide, that you can provide TechStock, uh, it's important that you get on that vendor list and, uh, and contact me and I'll, uh, I'll connect you to that office uh, here in the San Antonio district. Um, we also have offices throughout the state. So if you do business outside this 12 county of San Antonio district, we, uh, we'll put you in contact with that individual. But important that you get on that vendor service. If you have a service, you can provide to TechStot. For professional service uh, firms that are in the audience, um, also please contact me. Uh, the last two years, TechStot has seen, at least here in the San Antonio district, we've seen an increase in, uh, in uh, consultant firms that are managing our projects. So now those consultant firms, uh, if they do, if the project does have a, uh, uh, federal dollars, uh, there are DBE goals for the professional side of the house as well as the construction side of that project. So those are opportunities for professional services to uh, buy for those contracts, and they're pretty huge. You know, I, I cannot give you an exact dollar. I don't have that figure in front of me, but um, you know, again, if, if you're interested in in managing some of Textiles projects around the 12 county. Uh, San Antonio District, uh, please uh, contact me and I'll put you in touch uh, with professional services. Um, the, uh, the other couple of things I wanted to discuss for those subcontractors that are in the audience uh, and even prime, some prime contractors, if you're interested in becoming DB certified, please contact uh, here in San Antonio, South Central Texas Certification, Regional Certification Agency. Uh, they're on the website, that's South Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. And, um, and TxDOT does DB certification as well. Um, so uh, for, for TxDOT, you can contact Mr. Joe Sanchez, and his number is 512-486-5533. And it's 486-5533. And uh, important uh, uh, because uh, the majority of our federal aid projects that TxDOT manages uh, do have DBE goals. And uh, the only firms that can uh, meet that goal are subcontractors that are DBE certified. Not to say that if you're not interested in being certified that you won't get a, a subcontract, you know, but we do have goals, you know. And uh, a lot of our subcontractors uh, I would say the majority of them are not DB certified. So there's still opportunities for whether you become certified or not. Um, and then uh, the other person I want to uh, uh, I want to give you is Carlton Cooper. He's also with uh, TechStot. Uh, I didn't see him on the list today, but he does a lot of our outreach. And his number is 512-486-5513. That's 486-5513. Uh, these two individuals, Mr. Joe Sanchez and Mr. Colin Cooper, they work out of Austin. And so, again, uh, if you're interested, please contact them, or you can contact me, and I'll, and I'll connect you with them as well. I did want to mention uh, that uh, most of the, all of our projects are uh, advertised in the Construction Division website. That website's hard to navigate. Contact me. I'll, I'll point you to the letting schedule uh, of upcoming projects, and uh, it's important that you uh, it's a small subcontractor that you're aware of what projects are being led uh, so that way so you can uh, you know start forming a relationship with that prime contractor who's going to you know be the one that's going to award subcontracts so um, so again it's important that you know about the letting schedule uh, you know uh, and uh, start making those uh, those relationships uh, developing those relationships with those prime contractors that get awarded uh, the contract. Uh, also, I did want to mention uh, two upcoming projects that I thought are significant. Um, one is $185 million, and the other one's $187 million. Uh, the one for $185 is, uh, is, kind of, uh, is a project from SA-16, 
to IH10. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, called SL1604. And it's going to expand from a four to 10 lane, lane, lane expressway, including two HOV special use lanes um, and from four to four frontage roads. So it's a huge project. Uh, uh, we're looking at maybe January, January 2021 when it gets lit. So, uh, so keep that one in mind. You know, a lot of, a lot of contracting opportunities for small, small businesses that, that do construction work. A highway construction. Uh, the other one is the uh, again is the uh, one for 187 million, and that one's scheduled to let. I believe it's May 2021, and this is from IH10 uh, to US 281, and this is uh, SL1604 also. And so those are two big uh, opportunities uh, uh, for a lot of small contractors as well as the prime, you know. So, and then the third uh, project I wanted to mention, uh, and I don't have it here on my list, but uh, it's the 35 NEX. It's a five-year project. This is a double-decker uh, that's going to go from, uh, from 410, I-410 I to FM 1103. It's a 19-mile project, and roughly from Bear County all the way to uh, Comal, Guadalupe County. And I believe uh, that contract is probably going to be executed late this year. So uh, it's a five-year project, a lot of uh, uh, subcontract opportunities on that project. Uh, and I imagine including also for DB, uh, for DB truck, trucking firms as well as non-DB trucking firms. So, uh, so again, uh, contact me on these projects if you need more information. Uh, this 35 NEX project is gonna be managed out of our, what we call the North Bear uh, Area Office, uh, same building where I'm at, so I can get in, in contact with those individuals that are gonna be directly overseeing this project. So, and I'm sorry, I don't have a dollar figure for this 35 next, but it is a five year project and it's uh, a lot of contracting opportunities uh, coming up. Um, again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, email or email me or call me. My information's on the chat, on the chat, on the chat line. Thank you, Jose. Um, again, I just want to point out if you guys are not uh, looking at the, the Zoom group chat, as presenters are speaking, uh, Renee, Steven, myself, we're posting uh, links, we're posting URLs, we're posting contact information about the previous speaker and uh, the presentation that you're currently hearing. So in uh, Jose's example where he did not have a, a textile presentation, um, Renee was posting a series of links about where to go about finding contract opportunities specifically. So when you get a chance, just go ahead, take a look at that group chat uh, if you're in through a computer or tablet. At this time, uh, we're going to recognize Dan Curry, who is our facilities director, uh, another extremely strong partner of Bear County Swimby, our SBED department. Um, I cannot tell you of a single time Dan Curry's refused to take a meeting with someone, uh, both for formal and informal opportunities. He engages our office for everything that comes through with facility dollars. Um, doesn't get much stronger for Swimby advocates than Dan Curry. Um, so with that said, uh, Dan, your mic is live. Are you here? I am. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, sir. Uh, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Thanks, James. Uh, I provided the, the Swimby office with a kind of a one pager that I know they're going to blast out through their uh, social media um, uh, network and everything else. So the important thing for us to remember is from that kind of $5,000 to $50,000 uh, procurement of anything, construction projects or other, otherwise, building equipment, it's going to be um, through the, the Swimby office's CDMS system. Above that, $50,000 and above, we're going to go through um, the purchasing department. So I know that Jason Burgos gave a good introductory. Uh, I came in right on the end of that about their portal and how to get involved and how to do questions and answers and everything else. So what I'm going to show you is projects we have coming up in the next six months or so um, that will be released through purchasing. So, again, these aren't the smaller, less than 50. These are going to be 50 and above uh, jobs. So I don't know if you can go to that other sheet. Uh, but, yeah, so... Uh, we're working with um, SAISD on a Bibliotech EDU. It is not an inferior finish out, it's an interior finish out. So again, spell check didn't, didn't catch that because it is actually, you know, a real word. Uh, I think it's about a million and a half dollars. That'll come in summer is what we're planning on right now. Again, a lot of these things, guys, because of the current climate are in flux. So these delivery dates may change. That's why they're kind of bracketed in seasonal terms and not by day. Um, so again, Every three months, we'll be giving the Swimby office an update of this sheet. So check in for those blasts to make sure that 
whatever you're tracking, if you're looking at a particular project, that you're tracking when it's going to get released. Uh, we're going to be renovating a part of our Justice Center basement. There's an office renovation. It's about $400,000 in an occupied courts building. So a lot of uh, coordination work related to that one. We're also renovating uh, the third floor of our Bear County Archives building, which is here downtown. Uh, abatement will happen first, demo second, and then build back third. So there's three packages related to that. Uh, right now, out for bid right now on the on the purchasing portal is our firing range classroom building. It's a very small two classroom building that we're building around our existing control booth. Uh, we think that's about a half a million dollar job. Could be more, could be a little bit less, but that's out in the market right now. Um, we are going to relocate our master control at the main jail. Uh, that's about a half a million dollar. And all that is is an architectural piece of that. The electronics piece is totally separate. So that's just an architectural build out. So it's not all about the technology piece. It's more about building the room and the space for those new things to be landed. Uh, we're gonna be renovating the entire floor of our Vista Verde Plaza building uh, to consolidate our economic development and CDBG offices. Uh, that's about a $200,000 renovation. and will happen uh, a little bit later, probably in winter. Uh, we have some exterior doors and some awnings that need to go at our Cryer Juvenile Treatment Center. That's about a $250,000 project. Plans should be done here in the next 30 or 60 days. And we'll see about releasing that to the market. Um, in the Justice Center, we have a, a lot of doors, walls, card readers, and cameras that need to get installed to secure some, some corridor areas. Um, again, so that uh, those plans are about 90%. So they'll be done here pretty quickly. And then with the market, um, fifth floor renovation to our historic courthouse is about a $1.3 million job. Uh, that's currently in design and needs to be approved by the Texas Historical Commission. So we're hopeful that it's um, in the summer, but that may be for another year just because of those approval processes. So that's why you see 2021 for those dates. Uh, basement, uh, second and fourth floor restrooms. Uh, again, that's a lot of finishes work uh, inside restrooms uh, of the historic courthouse. We have finished standards, so everything should kind of be the same. But again, that's a you know $375,000 multiple phase project. Uh, we're building a new boiler enclosure uh, at our main jail. This is a outside on the back of the, of the jail and relocating some boiler and uh, water softening equipment out there. Uh, so that's a half a million dollar job. Plans are done, uh, but we hope to get that in the market here pretty soon. Uh, domestic water pump and systems over at the main jail. Uh, Again, that's a lot of mechanical equipment specific uh, and piping specific, not too much architectural work. Uh, this next one, the ADC Master Control is actually a duplicate of the one above. So that's, uh, apologize for that. Uh, we have another project that's on the street right now. It's exterior lighting for the outside of the jail. So that exterior lighting will be uh, to light up the facade of the jail to make sure that uh, nothing uh, nefarious looks like it's going outside uh, during the daytime, during the nighttime. Uh, we also are renovating inside of the jail uh, on the seventh floor a restroom for the staff. Um, that's plans are being worked on. That's about a hundred thousand dollar job. Uh, one one project that will be hitting the street very quickly at the last two. Uh, we will be replacing carpet in four courtrooms at the courthouse and one civil jury assignment area, and that's about one hundred six thousand uh, dollars. Those are all projects are all together in one bid. So again, look for that really soon out on the purchasing portal, as well as replacing some cameras uh, to work with our new Genetech security system. Um, we will be IP uh, cameras versus coaxial cameras. So that is gonna be kind of countywide in multiple buildings. And that'll hit the street here really soon as well. So those last two will probably be weeks away, not months away. Uh, but for us, this is kind of what's running right now. Um, as far as April, like I said, check in with um, the Swimby office or with the purchasing department on a regular basis. Uh, register as a supplier so you get those alert emails and make sure your NAICS codes and all the codes that you say you can do so you get those alerts. I always say the more the better. And as James said, if you guys want to reach out to us, we're not taking in-person meetings right now, but if you have a capability statement or you guys want to get on a Zoom conference call or anything else to tell me what you can do and how you can help us during this time, I'm perfectly happy to schedule those meetings. I'm available all the time. So if you guys have any desires, please reach out. Uh, I know that they'll probably publish my email address, but it's real simple. It's dcurry, D is in Dan, C-U-R-R-Y, at bear.org. You send it directly to me. I'll get you on a Zoom call or get you in touch with those people in my department that buy those services or, or solicit those services. 
and we'll get you guys at least in the Rolodex and then find out if we can go from there. So that's all I have, James, back to you. Thanks for joining us, Dan. Uh, appreciate you sticking with us. We had you halfway through the presentation. Um, that said, I know we have a few more buyers on here. Uh, thank you to the audience for sticking with us. Uh, a lot of good information. We're, we looked around and, and saw what webinars were out there and who was still providing contract opportunities. We know there's a need in our community right now, especially to understand what dollars are out there for contracting and commodity purchases and services still. Um, doesn't matter what the government's doing. Doesn't matter what shutdown we're through. We know that people still need to work and uh, the government still needs to function. So we wanted to make sure to, to bring as many of our partners on as we could. Um, so that's why we have so many on this call. Uh, but that said, uh, that said, appreciate you guys sticking on. And for the buyers, uh, you guys especially, we appreciate your partnership. Again, uh, I've said this in several emails. I've told you guys personally, we appreciate you working with us on this. And um, that said, Turner Construction is our next presenter. Uh, Portia, I apologize for misspelling your name so badly in, uh, in the agenda there, but I'm gonna recognize you in just a second here. Let me find your mic. Okay, can you all hear me? Portia, are you there? Yeah, can you, can you hear me? We can hear you and see you, Portia. Uh, the floor okay, is awesome. Um, well, thank you to Renee and, um, and Bears County for giving us this opportunity. Um, Turner um, only has one um, specific project that we're going to share, but before I get into that, I want to just share with everyone how to register as a subcontractor. Um, I actually posted it in the chat, but I'll talk through it. So if you visit www.turnerconstruction.com, you'll notice a um, menu bar at the top of the page. Uh, if you click on become a subcontractor and then go to the right hand uh, menu on uh, in the lower right corner and click create user, that'll take you to our uh, vendor registration um, form and it'll allow you to register as a subcontractor with us. Uh, and if you do hold a certification type, we ask that you please include that within um, that registration so that we can be aware um, and also upload your certificate so we can verify your certification. Um, that being said, um, we will be um, beginning outreach for a project that's actually located in Austin. We um, have the UT Austin State Hospital project that we're currently working on right now. Um, we'll be uh, going into our next phase of the project um, sometime in July, and we will be soliciting the following scopes of work. We'll look for excavation, site utilities, concrete, masonry, steel, glass and glazing, um, door strength and hardware, roofing, and MEP. Uh, we do anticipate um, those contracts to land between five and ten million each, um, but we don't have um, the, the actual estimates yet. And um, this project does have a hub pool of 21.1%, so we are actively and aggressively seeking um, minority and diverse contractors to bid on that work. Um, we plan to hold three virtual outreach uh, opportunities given the COVID uh, situation. Um, we'll hold those outreaches and we will send out information via our building connected um, interface. So again, if you register as a subcontractor and then reach out, we can make sure you are on the bidders list so that you can receive that information. Um, and that is, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Portia. Uh, your mic is now muted. We appreciate you being on the call. Appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, any questions for Portia or any other presenter, again, feel free to use the group chat. We will be following up with everything submitted, either during the webinar or following up with the buyer in person, giving them a transcript of the chat. Do not shy away from using it. Please type out your questions. And again, thank you to all the presenters who have remained on the line and are giving us this information to our community who so greatly needs it. The next presenter we have is April Bacon. I know April is one of the first ones to actually join. So April, really appreciate you sticking out with us. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but. <laughs> it means you're committed yes. to business. April, that. Uh, your mic is live and we can see you, ma'am. Your, your slides are up. Good. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. 
oh, it went to a slide and not just that one pager. Is that what y'all did? Okay. Oh, here we go. All right. Um, I am with the Texas Department of Agriculture. We purchase a lot of uh, different things because we um, do a lot of really different things. Um, we do a lot of licensing, but we also do a lot of inspections. And so we have um, uh, different types of tools that we need. Sometimes we'll get them done specifically for a type of agricultural event. For example, uh, down in the Houston area, they started getting something um, citrus canker. And so in order to control that, they had to uh, get a chipper that had a specific type of covering so that as it chipped, it did not put those types of things back into the air. And so we just have, uh, and I didn't know what an egg candler was, but we bought some of those too. Because we go into the stores and we take a look and we make sure that the eggs aren't cracked um, and things like that. So it's just very eclectic. We do have um, regional offices around the state. We have one in the Houston area. Um, we have one in Dallas another one in Lubbock, one in San Antonio, uh, one down in San Juan, down in the Rio Grande Valley, and we have a pen in El Paso. We also have regional offices for other types of activities that, um, are, um, that are around the state. Um, we have uh, um, export pens where somebody's going to export over into Mexico or in the Houston area, a lot of times they will export internationally. Um, they have to be checked before they're exported and we manage those pens. And so some of the things that we need, we need in areas that are um, not necessarily large urban areas. Um, so one of the things that we have that are, um, I put together a list of things that, that are available. One of our very large programs um, is federally funded food and nutrition. And in those um, areas, they uh, have several things coming up and they are, uh, some of them are quite large. Um, and so um, there's just a lot of real varied opportunities that way. Um, I don't know, if, can this flip down? Am I in control of this slide? No, yes. No, ma'am, we're controlling it for you. We're just trying to, to keep up. Okay, well, let me just say that I'm kind of a control freak. And so uh, uh, every once in a while, I just may grab the mouse because it's what I do. So just kind of ignore me and, and, uh, and flip whenever you feel like you can. So um, we have uh, compliance reviews coming up for federal nutrition programs. These are very large. Um, part of our grant um, requires us to go out and do compliance checks on the various individuals that are receiving funding for um, um, food for different um, uh, vulnerable groups, children, school programs, um, community services for um, aging adults, et cetera. And we are going to put one up um, and after we um, get that one uh, fully awarded, there will be two more behind it and they will be based on um, the one that we um, are in the process of doing right now. Um, we are also um, looking for, we have a legacy system that we use and we apparently built it ourselves um, back when nobody was really on the internet and they, everybody was still in what they called um, chat rooms and bulletin boards which tells you how old it is. Um, we need someone to help us document that um, because in the future, we are going to ask the state for funding to help us upgrade it, um, get it current or replace it. Um, warehouse storage and commercial food distribution, we're finishing one of those. We are gonna go out for another one statewide. Um, there are still opportunities for that if you have a food grade warehouse or can put together a team that includes, you know, food grade warehouse and um, trucks to get um, food to the school districts. Um, we always have a lot of conferences that are going on. Uh, we do background check services um, for the people that we distribute um, federal funds to. And, um, uh, we're looking for someone to provide those. 
Um, we do a lot of outreach. Um, so we have um, media buys for different programs throughout the year. Um, we are in our um, pens down in Houston. We have, um, we're looking to put up a storage building down there that will be a little bit out um, for different reasons. One of which is a lot of this um, uh, COVID-19 has put things that require a lot of um, specific activity um, a little bit on hold as we are seeing how things are, are moving. Um, we have some buildings that are in locations along the Rio Grande Valley. I believe two of them need a little bit of rehabilitation. I believe those are in Laredo and um, I am thinking maybe El Paso, but I'm not sure. Um, we have a pen down in um, uh, Del Rio that has a fair amount of activity. Um, sometimes it's challenging for us to get a certified hub down in that area, um, particularly because some of the jobs may be, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and um, a lot of times people don't want to travel for those. Um, but um, that is a place um, um, where we post and and um, need to get some good uh, stable hubs that we can utilize in some of these um, less popular areas. Um, we need some fulfillment services. We're at the end of our current contract on that. Um, we are um, finishing up on the safety outerwear. That's going to be um, something done internally. But we're also looking for um, our organic program software that will help us keep track of the um, um, farmers that are certified uh, in the area. Um, and we are at the beginning of trying to put that together. Um, that was something that we are interested in trying to get something that is off the shelf that requires very little um, um, individual build. And um, the final thing that we have, which has definitely been put off for a little while, is we have a program that goes around into these rural areas and asks anyone that has um, pesticides and other chemicals that they need to get rid of and haven't really known what to do with to come in and turn it into us, we will hire someone who has a big truck and access and um, certification for being able to um, move and dispose of hazmat materials. Um, and um, there will be uh, probably two events when um, we get to the point where we can start um, moving about the state a little bit. So these are basically what we have and, and what's available. Um, I put up a general um, email. Um, it's a, a box that we all use so that um, you don't have to worry about sending it to someone who's no longer there. If you use our TDA purchasing box, we're a small group and we all um, dip into that to make sure that um, everything that's coming in, all the questions and everything are getting answered. So um, we hope to see you. Thanks. Thank you so much, April. Um, again, please feel free, post your questions. Uh, April, if you can see the chat, someone who's actually uh, speaking directly to you in that group chat um, during the tail end of your presentation there. Um, April Alcorta with SAISD, are you with us? Yes. I have unmuted your mic and we can see you. That is that live? That can't be live. That's an awesome shot behind you. No, it's not, it's San Antonio. That, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I just wait. Uh, the, the floor is yours. Your, uh, Steven, oh, I don't have a presentation. Stephen, can you move the slide over for uh, SAISD? Okay, great. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go over real quick. For SAISD, we do encourage you to register on our bonfire portal. If you can go to the next slide. And I'm going to send everybody my contact information right now in the chat. So if you want to write it down. Um, but yes, yeah, so please register on our portal. Um, that's how you will receive email notifications based on your commodity codes. Also, keep in mind, um, you are enrolling into an email notification system. So this does not actually automatically gives you that you are a vendor with SAISD. 
you become a vendor with SDISD once you get awarded a contract from us. So that's how it works with us. Um, if you want me to email you the link directly, I can. Just um, email me at SDISDSwimby at SDISD.net. And the only upcoming solicitations that we do have online right now is for consultants, um, speakers, professional development. This is all for our academic department. Um, so if you have qualifications that I highly recommend you to um, go ahead and apply for this bid, I think there's gonna be multiple um, bid contracts on this bid. And then the next one is our general student learning materials and software. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'm also having um, webinars as well. Um, the next one is coming up with um, April 22nd. It's with UTSA PTAC. It's intro to government contracting. It's from two to three. You can register right now on Eventbrite and then I will directly send you the link um, for the Zoom. And the next one that we're having, um, once you're awarded a contract with SDISD, what happens next and the whole process with that. I also have the Assistant Director to Contract Management with us on that webinar and um, our contract administrator as well, so you can ask them questions. And that's gonna be Wednesday, May 6th from three to four. If you have any questions on how to become um, a vendor with us or just questions on directly of what's coming up for the summer, because we do have upcoming construction projects, please email me and um, I will reply to you. Thank you very much. Hi, can you hear me okay? Hi, this is Wendy Applewhite with Port San Antonio. Um, I don't have a presentation, but in the chat room, I did provide the information about registering for a vendor. I did give you our website information so that you could go in to our website and download the application and fill out the questionnaire to register. Uh, currently, we don't have any contracting opportunities. Uh, however, uh, our contracting opportunities are based on demand, uh, meaning that uh, based on our customers and tenants, uh, which includes the United States Air Force and Alamo Colleges, GSA, and multiple commercial uh, businesses, when they solicit um, opportunities that they need uh, services from us, we solicit the services. Um, so my information is on the website and I just wanted to provide that information. I'll answer any questions, provide you more detail in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, up next, we have Rebecca Mendez with UT Health San Antonio. On the agenda, we have um, UTHS CSA, and I told Rebecca that we would definitely point out that uh, they are now UT Health San Antonio, the hub program. She did send in her slides, uh, so we just have them listed with their old name on the agenda. Uh, but with that said, so I see Rebecca in the chat, but I don't see that you have a mic. Yeah, we're having a hard time uh, finding Rebecca's mic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to Rebecca. We're going to move on to the next presentation. Uh, Rebecca, we will pull yours up in just a second here. Up next, we have, uh, I believe it's Bruce Williams with uh, UTSA. Bruce, I'm finding your mic right now. Hello. Bruce, are you with us? Hey, yep, Bruce. I'm here. I hear you now, sir. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm away, so everybody can say good morning back. All right, so we're going to go over some different opportunities for UTSA and some small different things. So with us, our vendor registration is actually a form that you'll 
fax in. Well, actually, we'll email, we'll, we accept emails now too. Also, the next portion is our actually purchasing contract, contract specialists and purchases that you can have their contact information for and also my contact information. If you would like to directly meet with any of them, maybe via Skype, via Zoom, or via Microsoft Teams is how we're actually doing our meetings. You can just contact me directly with the email and then we'll set up a meeting so that we can sit down and talk. If you could scroll down. Our next portion right here, these are our two actually bidding opportunities that we have available, which are website design and also a replacement by Oprah's Benner. We also have some upcoming opportunities for construction wise would be actually a renovation for soundproofing. We also have a lighting opportunity that will be coming up for our arts department. We also have a, a sewer underground inspection opportunity with the repairs that will be coming up and also a roof repair that would be coming up. All of our solicitations and opportunities are actually posted to the SBD, which is the Electronic State Daily. Our university agency number that you'll type in to search our opportunity is 743. If you can scroll down for me. And I'm sorry for rushing, I'm trying to make sure everybody has their opportunity in time. On the next portion of the slide, we actually, how we do our procurement process. So. As everybody may know, and if you do not know, anything under 15,000 is non-competitive, so you'll just receive a solicitation for quoting that opportunity, and it'll be pushed through the system. Anything 15 to 50 is just our actual bidding that will go out with three quotes. Two will have to be from hubs. Anything 50 and above will actually be our RFP portion that will actually post publicly. The next portion of the slide, I'm not sure, James, if you can go down a little bit more. Steve, there we go. So one of the key ways to actually utilize our university's directory right here, you'll go online and you can actually search the different departments that you actually have, you know, contacts with or would like to find contacts with. This is a great way to actually do your marketing and strategic plan with the capability statements that our next presenter, PTAC, probably helped you grow and different things of that nature on. So you, right now in this point, as we know, it's kind of hard to do face-to-face -face meetings and different things of that nature. So outbound marketing is key for your business. So utilizing those good old elevator speech, that capability statements, your emails, find those contacts, and also work with us your supplier diversity people like me at UTSA to actually find the correct people in those departments so that we can actually facilitate these Zoom meetings or Microsoft Teams meetings and different things of that nature. But please be specific on the items and the actual bids or actual work that you've done that specifies directly towards that department and different entities and things of that nature so we can make the key connection with those individuals. I am posting my information Oh, don't forget, follow us on Twitter, too. Our Twitter name is Hub at UTSA, and I am done. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat, or you can contact me directly, and we'll be able to get that together. James, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. So my name is Rebecca Mendez and I'm with UT Health San Antonio. And uh, I have uh, entered my contact information once more in the chat, um, just so you have that. Um, so my boss's name is Eric Walls, and I'm the assistant hub coordinator, and I would like to be able to assist you in whatever I can. 
want to say thank you to Renee. Thank you to James for all his help. Um, there are some opportunities that I want to make you aware of right away. And as you see at the bottom of the screen, uh, Bonfire is our procurement portal uh, so that you can access the opportunities that are posted out there. Uh, you can also contact me for additional opportunities. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Right now, uh, one of the things that we're looking for uh, is any um, personal protective equipment, of course, PPE, gloves, masks, et cetera. Uh, we're looking for pictures, specifications, and pricing. Uh, if you have any of that uh, that you can provide, please send the information over to my email address. We're also getting ready to go out here today or tomorrow in the next few days, very, very soon, for Scientific Laboratory Steam Sterilizer. Uh, we're looking for um, uh, companies, vendors who can provide us with that service, uh, with uh, the equipment. Um, also, right now in Bonfire, if you log on to Bonfire, you're going to see clinic renovation for the Department of Echocardiography. That is due um, uh, April the 15th. There is also, uh, we're making preparations for a, a huge event. And for that event, the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium or the SABCS, we're looking for staging and display services. That is also in Bonfire due Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. And uh, also event security services for the same event, SABCS, also due on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. The uh, last one you'll see in Bonfire, unless it's updated today, is marketing and advertising services for our university. Uh, that will be due May 7th. Um, things that are coming up here also in the next few days today, tomorrow, uh, getting ready to be released also for SABCS is support staff and destination management services. And so again, this is a big event that we're getting ready for and we're gonna need all sorts of assistance with that. Uh, some of the things that are coming up that perhaps you may or may not see on Bonfire, but you can contact me and I can provide you the information of when the specifics to these projects, the specifics to these jobs, and of course when they're due, is for signage on and off campus, uh, roof replacement at our print shop, which is also, uh, which is on main campus, painting and flooring on four floors at our Mark building. Okay, so that's our, um, our clinic, one of our clinics, okay? Uh, grant writing services, that's an RFP that we're preparing to release, and oncology pharmaceuticals. So this is what I have for you today. Please be aware, as uh, some have already mentioned, that um, some projects, some bids and proposals that we were working on have obviously been put on hold. I don't have information on what those are, but we will provide to you information on all those that we are currently working on that we're currently seeking um, uh, vendors for. And so these are opportunities. Again, Bonfire is the way to connect with us other than reaching out to me directly. Uh, my number's on the screen, my email's on the screen, and I'm here to assist you in anything that I can. Um, and if you have any questions, if you're thinking of becoming a hub vendor and you need assistance with that, I can also uh provide assistance for that so whatever we can do to help please let us know as we continue to work uh in this new environment uh we will um do all that we can thank you renee thank you james thank you so much rebecca i'm receiving messages from text email in the chat here that uh everyone was having a hard time hearing me. Can you guys just type something in the group chat to confirm that my audio is live? Okay, I'm getting messages saying I'm live. Awesome. Renee, it says I'm live. My mic is hot again. Um, so I apologize for the delay, but earlier we tried to recognize the city of San Antonio. Uh, we had a, an issue bringing up their presentation. Uh, Suchi was not able to join us. Diane uh, from the city of San Antonio is on the call. Uh, Diane, you are now unmuted. Can I test your mic real quick? Diane, are you with us? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you all Hi, hear Diane. me? Uh, sorry for the complications. Thanks for sticking with us. Obviously, this is Antonio, someone a lot of folks want to hear from. Uh, Stephen, if you could stop sharing this presentation and move to your email and pull up the email that uh, I just sent you over with Diane's presentation.
Coming right up, James. Okay, um, Diane, if you could just hold tight a little longer. Stephen, while you're doing that, I'll tell you what, can you move over to the next presenter? Because uh, I know we're running behind on time. Uh, I believe it's PTAC with Curtis Moeller. I know he said he had a very short presentation and I know he's been on the call. Diane, we will be right back with you. In fact, I'm going to leave your mic open. Uh, but Curtis, I now have you unmuted. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Can everybody hear me? We can hear and see you, Curtis. And I apologize if you didn't hear me trying to moderate and, and move everything through. No problem. I know time is very valuable and it's great to see all our partners. Thank you to James and Renee for hosting this. I think it's great to get together. I haven't seen many of you uh, since SWIMB and of course our PTAC breakfast is an event, so I really do appreciate all of you. Uh, PTAC has been very busy. We've done 50 one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions in two weeks. Uh, our staff, uh, specifically on NICS codes 423350, PSC code 65, and 6115, uh, trying to get uh, connect uh, our small business clients and potential clients with uh, federal, local, and state suppliers for emergency uh, uh, COVID equipment, whether it's ventilators, um, sanitizer, wipes, um, uh, masks, whatever that is, uh, where uh, PTAC is actively involved in doing that, as well as answering phone calls uh, throughout the state and directing them to our centers. Uh, as you know, the PTAC covers the 38 county area. We help people with uh, proposals, uh, GSA schedules. Um, as Bruce mentioned, we're, what we're doing right now is helping with a lot of people with uh, consolidating their marketing capability pre presentations to uh, rather than being 20 minutes to a half hour uh, to uh, help them to facilitate doing a five to 10 minute presentation because we know a lot of our uh, procurement officers um, have limited resources and time. So to make that very pithy and to the point and very effective for them. We also encourage them to look at FAR 18, which is emergency acquisition, uh, part 18, um, and using that, as well as uh, FAR 19, as well as uh, uh, if they currently have a GSA schedule or their 8A, uh, to remind them that uh, to work with the uh, agencies and procurement agencies so that um, they can use uh, their current schedule or the current contracts they're on so that agencies can just write a task order against that and also taking advantage of the micro purchase threshold, which is now 10,000 and below to, to make uh, purchases very quick. Uh, we continue to provide information from the DOD, DLA levels on our Facebook. People need to go to our PTAC Facebook. And again, I'll put the link on here um, in the chat room, but we are posting bids almost daily on there. Uh, not only, uh, DOD and DLA bids and federal bids, but local and other uh, agency bids. So you want to make sure you can stay connected with that. And we're pushing that out via LinkedIn too as well. Um, so any way we can help anybody, we're here for them. And uh, they can just uh, uh, contact me via email. And I think I'll put my information here. And they can also go to the PTAC website. So we're here to help. We're here to work with our partners and let us know what we can do for you. And uh, thank you so much. Curtis, I appreciate you going through, uh, going through and sticking through with us, sir. Um, I'm going to mute your mic now. Again, any questions for Curtis, uh, type them in. Uh, PTAC is constantly working with us to make sure that our swimbies are better trained and better prepared to answer any uh, contracting needs in, in terms of bid response, et cetera. Um, any questions that you have about growing uh, capacity, uh, please reach out to Curtis. Uh, you can start here by typing in messages, but uh, he has shared his contact information. We will do the same. Any questions you have for Curtis Moeller, please feel free to put them in the chat or reach out to him directly. Uh, Diane, we still have your mic unmuted. Are you with us, ma'am? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen uh, because Stephen was having a hard time uh, converting uh, your slide. And let's see how this works. Okay, so I'm going to control your presentation. I'm not going to mute my mic so that we can speak in case something happens here, but uh, the floor is yours, ma'am. Okay, uh, so hello once again. My name is Diane Nicho, and I'm with the City of San Antonio's uh, Economic Development Department Small Business Office. And I know a lot of people out in the community always relate us to Sebeda, uh, which is one of our biggest programs. Um, but if we go to the next slide, um, <clears throat> the city does have other programs and we try to help small business development in all their stages, which is ideation, whether they're just thinking about it, having to start a business, the startup phase and the growth phase. 
So I'm going to go into detail a little bit about some of our programs. Of course, what we know, most commonly known is, is SEBETA, the Small Business Economic Development Advocacy Program, which if we go to the next slide, talks a little bit about the purpose of the program. So the purpose of the Sebeda program is to promote the use of small local minority women-owned businesses on city contracts. Next slide. So how do we apply or when does the Sebeda apply? So it applies to any formal city solicitation over $50,000. Also, it can apply to funding agreements, developer agreements, and to local agreements that are over $50,000. And we break out our industries in five categories, which are construction, uh, architecture and engineering, professional services, uh, other services, goods and supplies. Uh, those are some of our industries. Okay, the next slide talks about eligibility. So in order to be Sebeda eligible, first and foremost, sorry, uh, my header is a little bit low, low on my computer, but let me go quickly through this. First and foremost, uh, you must be certified through the South Central Te Texas Regional Certification Agency as a small business, first and foremost. From there, other certifications such as minority and or women owned, African American owned business, enterprise, all those certifications may be needed to satisfy any other requirements or criteria, uh, incentive points that we offer. Secondly, being headquartered or having significant business presence in what we term the SAMHSA, San Antonio Metropolitan Statistics. Statistical area, sorry, that is like a very hard word for me right now. Um, and that is Bear County and the surrounding counties that you see in that picture. So the next slide talks about registering with the city. I know Barbara talked a little bit about it too. I know others have talked about our central vendor registry, which is our SAPE's e-procurement system. Uh, that to register, the link is right there, sanantonio.gov slash purchasing slash SAPE's. Once you're registered, you're able to uh, have your certifications come over, you're able to get alerts of upcoming bidding opportunities, and also currently due to the COVID uh, situation, we are currently only accepting online bidding. So some of this, uh, some of the bids do go through the SAPE system. Um, all your constructions are going through the SIPCAST system. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, so the Sebeda program, we're able to apply up to 20 incentive points for small and or minority women owned businesses, which go towards the evaluation criteria. And this is for discretionary uh, types of bids. We're also allowed to do up to 40% of subcontracting uh, on a project, which we can stack the goals, such as maybe a 40% small business uh, goal with a 30% minority and a women owned. Uh, and then about a five or 6% African American owned. So we're able to stack goals. Uh, these goals can be applied to discretionary and low bid contracts. And of course, again, certification has to be from the SCTRCA and the firm must be SEBETA eligible. The next slide. And this is just a little bit about our program success last fiscal year. We had 253 million paid to 553 unique small minority women owned businesses. This represents 57% of the city's contractual spend, so actual dollars spend last fiscal year on contracts where the Sebeda program was applied. So kind of moving away from Sebeda, uh, but still within the Sebeda ordinance is our mentor protege program which is a uh, partnership with Alamo Colleges, uh, which has uh, two phases. Uh, the first phase is like a series of boot camp classes, and phase two is where you're partnered with mentors for about two years to learn uh, best practices. So if we go to the next slide, it gives you a little bit of an overview of some of the classes that are uh, in this uh, boot camp. So how to write a business plan, managing your financials, legal, QuickBooks, all those are classes that are offered through Alamo Colleges. And then we go to the next slide. So Launch SA was established about five years ago, previously known as Cafe Commerce. Uh, Launch SA is where we have businesses that can go and it's a resource center. It's like a one-stop shop. So if you wanna scroll down a little bit, 
Uh, this is what we reported out for our last fiscal year, and this is the five-year anniversary of Launch Essay, how they've impacted. Uh, as you see, um, you know, we've had, you know, 850 program participants across the programs that are offered through Launch Essay. Uh, we have definitely uh, assisted a, def a good number of uh, businesses that have come through. It uh, looks like about uh, 1,000 jobs were created, 1,000 plus jobs were created, uh, and 64% of the members saw uh, increased sales. So if we scroll down, it'll talk a little bit more about the specialty programs. These are just some of the programs that Launch SA has. If we go down, we're going to talk about the Loan Interest Buy Down Program, which is a partnership with Lift Fund or 0% loans for small businesses. Uh, so, of course, going to apply with Lift Fund, you could ask if you are eligible to uh, get this 0% loan buy-down. And the city has been contributing about $250,000 towards buying down loans. We've had 30 total receiving loans um, and 705 1,100 loans have been given to small minor women businesses and 70% of 70 full-time jobs have been created. So the Small Business Development Beeler Program is actually a relatively new program. It is a program that helps small businesses who want to renovate, expand, uh, or trying to grow their space, their location, their business location. So the city uh, does help with saws and saw sewer and water impact fees. So there are some criteria. If we go to the next slide, you'll see uh, some of the eligibility criteria, of course, and the type of tier that you would fall in depending on the criteria that you meet and how much maximum fee waiver you'd be eligible for. And then the last is just kind of page is just uh, kind of contacting us. Uh, uh, Chuchi Nagpal is currently our interim assistant director. Uh, she's overseeing uh, the small business office. We have Sarah Olivares, who is our economic development coordinator, who helps with some of the programming that I mentioned, like Launch SA. Uh, and of course, we have Brian Salt, who's the director of Launch SA and the contact there too. Uh, and the fee waiver program, any of those other programs that are not SAMEDA related are um, under Sarah. And also you can contact Hugo, who is our small business liaison who can help firms who are trying to start a business or have questions about permitting. Uh, we have mentor protege, uh, which is Jan, and she's the one who oversees the program over at Alamo Colleges. Once again, my name is Diane Nicho, and I am with the city's small business office, and I do focus on Sabeda. So any questions about Sabeda definitely can be sent to me, and I'll provide my contact info again. Uh, thank you, Diane. And I'm sure you can anticipate getting a lot of questions from small business, just as we have regarding uh, loans and you mentioned your we, your fee waiver program. Uh, we've been receiving a whole lot of questions um, regarding your program as well as SBA funding and really any capital needs that small business can latch on to. So if you guys have questions about that, and we're sure you do because we speak with many of you on a daily basis, please, please reach out to Diane. If she's not the best contact, she will put you into contact with the folks to answer your questions. But please start with Diane. Um, there's been questions about this presentation that we have. Will we be sharing it? The slides will be made available on our website. Uh, Steve will be following up with some social media, blasting this out for those who are asking if they can have the slide presentations made available to them. Uh, Terry Williams uh, with the SBDC and the CGC. Uh, Terry, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, I have unmuted your mic. Uh, I know we're two hours in. You've been with us the whole time. Thank you for sticking with us, ma'am. Uh, can we hear that your mic is working? Are you with us, Terry? I am here. Can you hear me? I can hear and see you, ma'am. The floor is yours. <laughs> Great. Um, sure. It, anything for my good friend, Renee Watson. I've been multitasking here, so I have another laptop on the side um, um, doing other things as well. 
Um, I can't see myself, so I guess everyone can see you. And we'll just go to, to the next um, slide. So I'm just going to talk real briefly about some procurement opportunities that, <clears throat> excuse me, that the um, DOD has. Of course, everyone, okay, of course, everyone, um, if you've been watching the news, and I don't know how you could not be, because it seems like some of the only things to watch right now while we're all at home besides Netflix. So, so we know that federal government is asking for PPE, personal protection equipment. They're asking for cleaning supplies, disinfectant. Um, they're asking for a, a, other medical supplies like medical clothing and scrubs. Um, a while back, there was some source of salt put out for that. So I don't, I don't know if that link is live, if you could click on that. If not, that is the link where you can find um, the three areas that I listed right there. PPE, personal protection equipment, cleaning supplies, disinfectant, uh, uh, et cetera. Um, those things at the, the, the top, um, um, top of the line, if you will. Also, um, if you go to the link that's um, right below beta.sam.gov, FEMA, of course, um, has a lot of requests that's out. Um, knowing how to do business with them right now, you can, that link where it says industry liaison program can get you to um, the appropriate FEMA site so that those that do have the needed um, supplies and equipment um, that's listed here can get rid of FEMA or um, Department of Homeland Security, but more, but more so <clears throat> FEMA is the organization that um, you need to look at right now. Um, on the next slide, I just pretty much, um, Right, right now, there's flexibility with SAM registration. Everyone knows that to do business with the federal government, you, the first step is to be registered in SAM. So that's still a first step. However, there's some flexibility. If your SAM registration is, is expiring soon, um, like next month, like <laughs> May 16th or, or, or um, you will be afforded a one-time 60-day extension. That's something that just came out um, a few weeks ago by OMB, Office of Management and Budget. So they're trying to do a lot of things um, uh, expeditiously. Um, I know you've also heard of the Defense Production Act that the president has now in, in, invoked. So uh, um, a lot of that is, is trying to be expedited. Um, I see a question here that says, how do you get a SAM registration? Uh, work with PTAC. Um, Curtis, who just presented right before me, can help you uh, um, with that. Um, and then uh, see the website for dhs.gov as well. Um, so check the chat room for that. The CARES Act, a lot of folks have um, been hearing about the CARES Act, which actually is the acronym for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. So um, uh, that's the act that has, that has infused a lot of funding into um, trying to help businesses, trying to help individuals, um, trying to provide some relief, excuse me, um, as far as funding and economic um, relief, you've heard of the paycheck, the PPP uh, Paycheck Protection Program. That's also part of the CARES Act. Um, you've heard of um, what we're calling idle loans. That's economic injury disaster loans. So that's also part of that as well. But what's also significant is that at <clears throat> has included uh, $192 million to the SBA for SBDC assistance. And that's on top of what was um, the current allocation for 
SDCs. So, so in response to that, we at UTSA, um, in the last couple of weeks, ever since we knew this um, was allocated and approved, we are taking steps to um, um, start, if you will, uh, implement a center specifically to help small businesses get through um, um, coronavirus economic injury. Um, so that will be to help them get through the loan process, to help them um, get through the process for PPP and um, anything else that we can help with. So this would be consistent with the counties that we already serve in the Southwest Texas border region, the 79 counties in our field centers. And that's all I have. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you, Terry. Uh, I am right now trying to locate Ellen Ward with Joris. Uh, Ellen, I have your mic live. Can you hear us? Or, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just making sure because Renee was saying that there was an issue where uh, I wasn't coming up with the uh, audio. So yeah. uh, appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, I know that we tried to put you at the back end of the presentation because you had a, another webinar that you were attending. Uh, Joris is actually on contract with the county as well as SISD for two different, um, I guess, vertical construction projects. Uh, we, we actually use and partner with Joris quite a bit. And uh, Ellen is here to talk about what opportunities they have available. Ellen, thank you for joining us and sticking with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You stole some of my thunder, though. <laughs> oh, I <apologize> there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are great partners with Bear County, and uh, we love their diversity team. So thank you for inviting me today. Um, I just want to walk through the process of registering. Just know that Joris is accepting bids for all of our projects still. Um, we're currently working with University Health System as well. Uh, which has a great diversity goal, and we're really trying to meet that. So those bids are still coming down the pipe. Um, commercial construction is an essential business, so we're still building um, business as usual. So please know that there's nothing being pushed. We're trying to keep the timeline the same so that we meet the contract deadlines. So if you're interested in working on any Bear County projects, city projects, university health system projects, um, SAISD projects that Joris is, uh, has been awarded, please continue to bid business as usual. We have put a lot of things into place though um, while you're on the site um, to prevent the spread of this virus. Um, we're taking care to make sure that if you are still coming to work because we are essential as construction workers, um, that you are not in any danger and either are your coworkers. So just know that. On this first page, I have information on how to register with Joris. Uh, go to Joris.com, and once again, that's Joris like Morris with a J, not Joris. <laughs> um, and then you need to go to the subcontractor link. Uh, it's on the tab at the right, and then uh, select bid schedule. Um, our bids will be posted on the website. Uh, there's nothing that we don't post, um, so just know that. If you are not registered with us, you won't receive bids, so that's a problem. Um, please register as soon as possible. If you're not sure if you're registered um, and maybe somebody else was registered and they're no longer with your company, please register again so that you can start receiving bids or reach out to the estimating administrative assistant, Myra Schwartz, who also coordinates with me for diversity um, and make sure that you can get the point of contact changed. Um, right now, we're not able to do meetings because we're trying to practice social distancing when it comes to new firms. However, um, you can try to set up a Zoom so that we could see each other and kind of try to make it a little bit more normal to meet new people. Um, those uh, are hard to do right before the bid because we want to make sure that um, everybody gets a fair chance. So just know that. Uh, there is a second slide. Oh no, there should just be one, I'm sorry. That has old stuff on it. Um, but our offices in San Antonio, Dallas, and Houston also care about diversity and inclusion. I actually help with um, those as well. Um, we were just awarded some schools um, in uh, our different markets. Um, and a lot of people are being great about knowing that diversity and inclusion is important. So know that there's a place for you on those projects as well if you're in any of our other markets. 
Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, we had to postpone our uh, information or swim bee sessions with our university health system partner um, and JE Dunn, but we will try to do that one more time. We have one more last good lesson that we would like the community to, to come in and participate in, um, and more information about that will come down soon. And that's it. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Ellen. Um, as you mentioned, huge, massive project underway right now. Uh, in the very beginning of the presentation, you guys heard from Eddie Cruz at the UHS, uh, the J.E. Dunn, Joris Project, uh, massive capital, uh, massive construction project, a lot of subcontractor involvement and opportunity. Uh, we're working through this lockdown and this freeze just the way that you guys are. Um, when life does get up and going and we return to normal, though, Ellen is a tremendous contact to reach out to, see if you guys can, uh, can get on with some of the projects that Joris is um, actively participating with. Now, last but not least, we have Sheena Little. Sheena is with the Small Business Administration, who you may have seen has been in the news a lot lately. Sheena, I'm trying to unmute your mic right now. It's just uh, giving me a hard time. Sheena, I show that your mic is live. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, James. Can you hear okay. me? Uh, I can. Yes, ma'am. So what I'm going to do, Stephen, is I'm going to take away your sharing. And I'm going to pull up. Okay, Sheena, um, I'm not sure. Can you see the presentation? I've got your SBA logo up, and then I have your updated slide as the second slide. Okay, just enable editing on there and just pull up the second slide if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, excuse me. I should say good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sheena Little, and I am a procurement center representative or PCR for the U.S. Small Business Administration. So in this capacity, I support about 16 Department of Defense agencies to ensure they're using the small businesses to the fullest extent practicable as prime and or subcontractors. Specifically, I support uh, Joint Base San Antonio, the Air Force's 502nd Contracting Squadron located at both Lackland and Randolph, the Defense Health Agency, U.S. Army Medical Command, 410th Contracting Support Brigade, the U.S. Army Mission and Installation Contracting Command, the Acquisition Management and Integration Center, Detachment 2, and they're formerly known as the ISR or the Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance, the 338th Specialized Contracting Squadron, the 772nd and 773rd Enterprise Sourcing Squadrons, uh, currently located at Port San Antonio, the Cryptologic and Cyber Systems Division, the Texas National Guard in Austin, Texas, and four of our surrounding Air Force bases located at Diaz, Shepard, Goodfellow, and Laughlin. So I am your small business advocate by working generally with the aforementioned agency small business professionals such as Terry Bayshore, who briefed earlier today, by reviewing all of the requirements over the micro purchase threshold uh, that are not projected to be a small business set aside. And I'm primarily reviewing to confirm that the decisions to not restrict the requirement to a small business set aside um, is valid and substantiated. As you might know, the US government is the largest, uh, the world's largest buyer with over $550 billion uh, that are small business eligible dollars. The agencies that I support uh, procures primarily the general services, training, supplies, construction, A&E, medical staffing, IT and supplies, general IT services to include uh, hardware and software, and just about everything in between. Um, the vast majority of the DOD federal requirements will be posted on beta.sam or by one of our established contract vehicles, such as the GSA schedules that Karen Byer mentioned earlier. So if you're not registered to do business with the federal government, please contact our PTAC. I know Curtis Moeller spoke a little bit earlier about today. Um, 
So please contact them because we cannot do business with you on the federal side unless you're registered in our system uh, for award management through beta.sam. So most importantly, if you provide any PPE or supplies directly related to the COVID-19, please contact me ASAP because we are in dire need of these uh, supplies on the federal side, primarily the mask, the COVID-19 test kits that are FDA certified, ventilators, respirators, and anything um, even to include um, uh, the cleaning of like the hospitals that you can do medical grade cleaning. So if you can provide any of those types of services or supplies, please email me at my email that is listed below, uh, that is listed above on the slide at sheena.little at sba.gov. And if you're a small business in need of COVID-19 SBA assistance, you can please visit our uh, website at www.sba.gov slash coronavirus. And for all other federal assistance, please visit www.usa.gov slash coronavirus. Thank you so much, uh, James and Renee for inviting me. Thank you for joining us, Sheena. Um, you, like every presenter that we've had today, everybody's being inundated with requests. Uh, we understand are committed to helping and support our small business community. I appreciate every single person, especially our speakers who stuck with us through this thing. Uh, our intention here, I know it was a heavy agenda, heavy schedule. We went over time, but we, we just wanted to get as many opportunities out to the public as we can, which is why we had so many people on the call. Uh, just from our own analysis of the market, it looked like we hadn't had one of these meet the buyer type situations. Um, so that's why we engaged the local, the federal, the state, uh, our, our GC partners. We just want to try and get as much information out to you, the public, um, our swimming businesses as we could. So we appreciate you guys sticking with us. Um, with that said, before I hand this over to Renee Watson uh, for closing, I just want to say I will be leaving this uh, meeting open for a while after we officially close here, just so everyone can continue to submit questions. If you did not have a chance to do so in the chat, please, I'm gonna leave it open for a few minutes. Go ahead and submit your questions. Again, I can't stress enough. If you have something we haven't addressed yet, if you have something that you wanna ask and didn't get a chance to um, get a response from the buyer in the chat, everything that you type, we're gonna have a transcript of and we'll provide to every presenter that spoke today so that we can all follow up with you and get your, your questions addressed. So with that said, Renee, there's always a delay here in me finding someone and unmuting their mic, but give me just a second. I'm going to hand this back to you. Renee, are you there? Yes. Thank you, James. want to commend you for doing a good job. Um, thank everybody who's hung in with us uh, all of this time. Um, hopefully, uh, and, and we're posting the guide to doing business with the county once again. Um, let's open up the mics for, we'll do another 15 minutes. And, uh, if you have a few questions, we'll take them because some of our folks are still on the line, but we do want to have the, um, the questions to the buyers direct in the chat room, but we do realize some folks are on their cell phones and they probably can't, uh, type in the information right now. Uh, so let's, let's unmute for, uh, and let's see if we can do this traffic right quick, James, for about 10 minutes. Okay, logistically, if I unmute everyone's line, it's it's going to be a rush of everyone trying to ask their questions. So. Yeah, let's let's try it. Let's see, because we have quite a few who have dropped off. Um, so we'll we can we can see um, and everybody be kind of attentive to everyone else. Let's see if we can do some of the questions. As a question, if you are, if you don't have a question. Okay. Uh, questions. Anybody have a question? Yeah, I mean, I can ask a question. We got it. Are you on there? Could you say, and there it says you have two mics. I mean, uh, can you find Ruiz MD? I can see him and unmute him. 
James? Oh, yes. I was just curious about how to get the products specified on these specific projects. Do you guys use a lot of engineering firms or how do you go about doing that? Which, which agency are you referencing? Are you talking about the COVID products or what products? Um, just in, any construction projects, really. So who's, who's on the line? Uh, is Joris or, Sun, or anyone from the contractor still on the line? We're going to connect you with one of our general contractors, so okay. we, we we can we can get that back to you. Okay. And, can and you what, pop that in the chat room in detail? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, the the final question is: Is do you guys go um do energy efficiency upgrades, and if so, um, or do you have performance based projects? That sounds like a general contractor. Let's. Pop that in the chat room and we'll get back with you. Okay, thank you. Would it, can you please repeat the question? This is Ellen Majoris. Uh, yes, the, the question I have is, um, you know, with the LED upgrades and things like that, uh, there continues to be other energy efficiency projects that are, that are getting approved for facilities and you can do a performance contract so you guarantee the savings. I was curious if, if, um, if the agencies are looking uh, to improve it um, efficiency in their buildings and, and utilize performance-based contracts to do that? Uh, we're always looking for efficiencies in our building, uh, but we usually go on what the architect and the engineer say that we have to build. Okay, okay. And then I guess I would need uh, access to the engineering and architect firm? Yes, sir. Okay, and I, how can I contact you to, um, to get that information? Okay. So it actually would be good for you to reach out to the client um, or uh, the owners in that respect because okay. they can put you in contact with who they've selected. Um, we work with them and I'd be happy to share anybody that I know their contact information so you can speak with them. But your best bet is having a Renee or a James say, hey, I need you to talk to my Swimby and they'll talk to you. And they'll, they'll probably talk to you if I suggest it, but... Um, that's the owner is the one who selects them. And uh, maybe in the future, we can have some engineers and architects be a part of this conversation as well. That'd be amazing. Yeah, Perfect. thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. One of the things that um, we just, uh, I just posted is the uh, AIA of San Antonio, the American Institute of Architects, which is a great group and a, a networking group. So we can get you started with that, as well as the uh, Society of Engineers, and then we'll get you a meeting with one of our facilities folks to help you to, to, to start that process. Renee, we have a Pamela Hodge who's using the raise hand feature. Uh, so okay. they'll recognize her. Do you want to recognize her? Sure. Pamela, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, hi, thanks for recognizing me. I just had a question um, from the USDA presentation. Um, there was a list of projects and there were a couple that, um, that I'm interested in for um, our company. How do I go back and then get specific information about those particular projects that were on the list that uh, was, was on the slide? So April Bacon, if you're still on the call, I've unmuted your mic. Did you hear that question? No, I didn't. I was typing in an answer because I couldn't figure out other than doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's how to, uh, it's how all to on, jump in. <laughs> no, it's all on me and Steven in terms of who gets muted and unmuted. So, um, yeah, th there was a direct question from Pamela. Pamela, could you repeat that? I still have your mic live, and April Bacon was the one presenting that information. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, uh, April. I um, when you had your list up of projects, there were a couple um, that I was particularly interested in getting additional information to see if my company could bid those. Um, how do I get information about the particular or individual projects that you put you had up on your list? Well, I recommend that I mean some it's the um, you have to pay for it, but my recommendation is is ends up being probably some of the best money you'll ever spend from this perspective. I don't know if you have joined um, or are a participant on the um, CMBL, which is a website put up by the state comptroller. It's 
the um, centralized master bidders list, I think it costs about $70. You sign up, you put your information in, you pick the different NIGP codes, which are purchasing codes basically in the areas that you um, provide goods or services. And then every time there is a formal or informal solicitation, state agencies um, that are under the comptroller's rules, and, and there are a few that aren't, but most of them are, they have to go out to the CMBL and they have to go into the different NIGP codes and send to uh, people who are in those codes. And um, agencies do it differently. Sometimes um, we, we typically will go and pull every vendor that is in a particular NIGP code. And so when, you know, when we get ready to post, then that's typically where we, you know, where you can make sure that you get a notification. Um, you can go out and look for things that are posted on the CMBL. You don't have to, um, I mean, sorry, there is another piece to that. And once we go to post, we post on something we refer to as, yes, because we're government, it's an acronym. But um, we post to the ESBD, which is um, basically uh, um, um, the board where we put up, and, and you know, all state agencies that are under these rules do, we put it up on the electronic state business daily, I think is what that stands for. And um, you can go in and see those um, if you um, have, certain memberships, and I don't know everything about which ones they charge for or not, you can get to where you are actually receiving um, notifications of things when they're posted, but, but you don't have to. You can simply go in and take a look, and um, you can look for free and see what's been posted for agencies around the state. Um, one thing that I would note, um, and that I try to tell as many as I can about this particular thing is, over the years, um, the state uh, has gotten um, much more uh, organized is probably not the right term, but as far as um, getting buying things in bulk and getting general state contracts that can be used by anybody. And, um, and there are some uh, legislative requirements or some rules requirements that um, state agencies must go to these particular places first. So um, if we are going out to buy something, we have to first look to see if it's on state contract. There are a couple of other places, not necessarily as much for services, but for goods. We also have what was is referred to as set-asides. Mm -hmm. And you have to um, go out to um, the Texas Correctional Industries, the you know, prison system, and see if inmates make whatever it is. You also have to go and look at the, um, um, the handicapped. Um, there's an organization that um, manages, um, uh, collects agencies that are available and use um, um, handicapped individuals. Um, and you have to go out and look and see um, if they have anything that they can provide based on what your requirements are. So there's two or three little um, hoops that we have to step through, um, generally speaking. The other place, other than having to go off a term contract, if it's been waiting to is in the area of, um, of technology, the um, Department of Information Resources for the state, uh, basically the state's IT department, um, you um, have to go out and look and see whether or not what you want to purchase is already on a contract that they have because those vendors have been generally vetted to make sure that whatever they're producing meets um, state security standards and various things like that. So, you know, if, if we go through all of those particular situations and there's not anything there that meets our requirements, then, you know, we are still um, posting and doing things, but we, we are more in control of our spending destiny at that point. 
So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but um, there's there's ways to navigate. And I think the the more you know, um, the the better off it is for you. Which were you interested in technology or were you interested in something else? Technology, for example, there was business analysis to documents legacy system um, where you're you're documenting a legacy system um, to migrate. That one and also the um, number 11, or you, I believe number 11 is the one where you said you're documenting the farmers um, um, and you're looking for an existing database to do that kind of, or just uh, existing. Right. Are right. those posted on ESBD? They can are we, not posted can we, yet. Can, can I jump in here? Can sure. we get you guys to talk offline? Where it's, it's about 12.30 and sure. uh, Zoom is gonna cut out on us. So we're gonna have to have oh. everyone to jump off. So we really appreciate everybody and uh, April will put you in touch with her. Did, did you post your information so April can, y'all can call each other right quick and just follow through on those questions if we, if we could. I'm, okay. working from, I'm working from home, but I- uh, On the email. If she contacts me, I can send her, I don't wanna blast my personal cell phone out here, but right. I, I'd be happy to send her a number that she can call me on. Okay. Or you can send me the email with the question and I'll connect you with April right after we get off the call. We really appreciate everybody. So all of our partners and all of our small business owners, uh, we hope this was helpful uh, and we'll continue to, uh, to do these types of uh, activities over the next uh, few months, uh, weeks, uh, and especially with the changes in budgets. Uh, changes in forecasts and changes in projects to keep everybody informed. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.